As we know, Halloween was October 31st, and All Saints Day, November 1st, and All Souls Day is November the 2nd. Now, we never forget to celebrate Halloween. It's commercially all around us, candy vomits everywhere, there's scary music and there's costumes galore. But All Saints Day sort of gets neglected, and All, Saint, all Souls Day, you might as well forget about that one if you even knew that it existed. All Saints Day in the Roman Catholic tradition is the day to venerate, to remember the actual saints, those who have passed a series of criteria involving miracles and appearances of the divine and so on. And All Souls Day is the day when ordinary people who have died are remembered. Now we here in the Protestant church have sort of mushed them both together and we observe it because we're low church on either the Sunday before or after November 1st, whichever is more convenient. So here we are. A day set aside for us to remember those who have come before us. A day to remember those we have loved in our lifetimes and lost recently or long ago, where our grief can be marked by a ringing of the bell by the lighting of a candle, and we can remember that we are not alone in our grief, in our loss. And on this All Saints Day, the scripture for the day is Psalm 34, where we remember that God is good. Now there's a camp thing that happens when we say that phrase, when one person says God is good, everyone responds with all the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Indeed, God is good all the time. But sometimes, in the midst of our grief, it is hard to remember that God is good. It's sometimes hard to remember that God is good all the time. And I think that it's in part because we're not super comfortable with death. Other cultures and traditions are a little bit more comfortable than we usually are. Now, growing up, I grew up in rural upstate New York, and cemeteries were a part of my childhood. My home church had a cemetery where we would run and play, and my best friend's church growing up had a cemetery behind it where we played hide and seek on a regular basis, and we didn't think anything of it. We would run around, we'd stop occasionally and look at the, the headstone and read about it and be like, oh, that was a baby, wonder what happened. And oh, there's somebody who lived to be 102, wow, that's really cool. And we'd continue on with our hide and seek game. But here it seems more often that we just go to the cemetery to mark a burial. On Halloween, though, I heard this great NPR story called Remember That You Have to Die, and it interviewed an author, Paul Cadonius. And they were talking about other traditions and how they have interactions more with their deceased than we do. Traditions where bodies stay around for a while after their life is gone, some where their skull stays around and they interact with it and it helps with homework, mummification, where they interact with the body, ways that our culture does not really allow us to interact. But at the end of the interview, Cadonaris said this, at first it is a little unsettling. And there's a sense that you know we are doing something a little sinister by peering beyond the veil. He said, but quickly you realize that this is not only normal, but it's actually kind of titillating and exhilarating to cross this border and to realize that for centuries, people would visit the dead and would interact with them. And he kept going and he said, and I would look into the eye sockets of those who had preceded me who were my relatives. 
And it's like I'm standing in the present. I'm standing among the past, but at the same time contemplating my future. And that's what All Saints Day is about. We have a chance to stand in the present, to stand among the communion of saints who have gathered with us and surround us, to remember the bigger communion of saints, of all those who have come before us, and to simultaneously contemplate our future. How are we going to live as saints? And it seems to me that one of the very best places to begin considering the answer to that future how are we going to live question is to claim our first John text, to claim our identity as children of God. We are not disconnected, independent people. We are God's children. We are loved by God. We are supported by God. We are guided by God. We are held by God. And so this All Saints Day, as we stand in the present and remember the communion of saints around us, I invite us to claim our identity as children of God, an identity that helps us to be saints too. May it be so. Amen.